Uh, welcome. I'm uh, Keith Landa, Director of the Teaching Learning Technology Center at Purchase College. And I'm Elizabeth Pearson, the Education Abroad Coordinator in the Office for Global Education. And we're here with Linda Geronda, lecturer in the Liberal Studies and one of our COIL instructors here at Purchase College. So, so Linda, if you could uh, start us off by briefly telling us a little about, bit about yourself, who you are, what you teach for Purchase and in your other uh, places and um, give us a little bit of your background. Okay. First of all, thank you, Keith and Elizabeth for having me here today. I'm delighted to talk about COIL. It's really been such a wonderful experience at Purchase. Um, by way of background, I'm a full-time attorney um, and I've been teaching at uh, SUNY Purchase in the SUNY system for about 12 years, first at Westchester Community College, and I've been at SUNY Purchase for the past 10 years. I teach law-related courses to undergraduate students, and it's really my favorite thing to teach law-related courses to undergraduates because that's when they're thinking about law school, and it gives me great joy to see students who think about it and then actually go on to law school. I also teach at uh, Fordham's uh, Gabelli School of Business. I teach uh, business law courses and, and business strategy courses. And then I teach at Manhattan College in the graduate program. I teach organizational leadership courses. And so Linda, can you tell us how and why you decided to get involved with COIL and wanting to bring it into your classrooms? Sure, I think it was around the summer of, of August, it was August uh, two, 2016, and I got an email from Keith Landa, and I've worked on other projects that Keith has sponsored and told me about uh, creating online courses, and so uh, any information that comes out from Keith is always good and something to take a look at. And so I was very intrigued because it was this opportunity to get involved in international online instruction and an opportunity to partner with another university and teach students about um, cross-cultural competencies. I think at that point, it also included a trip to Cuernavaca. So that was quite interesting as well. Um, so it intrigued me. You had to apply for it. I think you had to be accepted into it. Um, and so I, I, I applied and I was delighted when I was given the opportunity. So along the same lines then, um, what benefits did you see coming out of uh, adding COIL to your courses for your students? I thought it was a wonderful opportunity uh, to teach my students about um, global competencies, cross-cultural understanding, uh, to challenge stereotypes, to promote diversity. Um, and the other interesting part about it, as I learned about COIL, it was the opportunity to partner with somebody, perhaps in your discipline or in a completely different discipline, and create content um, that sort of had its own space within your course. So for that semester, I was teaching a course called Law, Order, and Disobedience. And initially, I thought, she I'd love to partner with somebody who couldn't have a legal perspective, um, an international legal perspective. And I wound up partnering with a professor of biology. And the two of us collaborated on a topic. And we, we selected bioethics. And we taught um, the topic of right to die and the, the global perspective and the international perspective on right to die. And the students were put into cross-cultural teams. And so the benefits to the students were amazing. Um, in the beginning, my students didn't know that they were going to be part of a COIL program. Um, and some were not really happy about it. And, you know, how is this going to be different? Why do I have to do this? Why do I have to be on a WhatsApp chat? Why do I have to go on something similar to Facebook? I had some students who were, you know, anti-social media and didn't want to be a part of that. Um, but, you know, I, they really, really came around. And I had uh, one student in particular who was really the most vocal op opponent. Um, and by the end of the semester, he, uh, the, my partner who was from Mexico along with several other instructors and their family actually came to Purchase College. And this student invited them to where he worked, invited them to his family home for dinner. Um, and so what I watched over the course of a semester was students who had very little knowledge about Mexico um, and about international um, uh, content around right to die. And I watched them evolve into understanding that they were just like 20 year olds, uh, just like themselves. We had WhatsApp chats with lots of discussions about their pets and favorite restaurants and favorite places. Um, and as a result, students uh, developed friendships that they had kept uh, beyond the class. And so that was really rewarding and very fulfilling. That, that's wonderful, Linda. And, and how about you as an instructor? What are some things that, that you got out of it and how did it impact your teaching? Uh, I thought it was a great experience. I, I will tell you that it was 
Um, it was a lot of work in the beginning, um, but my partner and I were committed to making this a success. It was for my partner, um, it was a very prestigious selection that he was the one chosen at his university. And so, and it had uh, high level um, exposure. And so for sure, he wanted to make it a success. I was honored to be one of two people at Purchase um, to do that. And so uh, for me personally, the opportunity to, to co-teach uh, to work with somebody from, from a different culture was very personally rewarding. Um, and I was so intrigued with the, the content. I wound up doing professional conferences um, as a result to share the story. And um, for my uh, doctoral dissertation, I did some research on the use of on, on online technology to promote cross-cultural understanding and how adult educators learn how to do that. So it's been both professionally and personally rewarding for me. Just a quick follow up to that before we get to the next question, uh, maybe uh, say a few words about your experiences with the Global Commons and how that uh, came as an outgrowth from your previous COIL experience. Sure, and that was a, such a remarkable experience last summer. Um, again, it was probably an email from Keith that said, would you like to be a curriculum developer or to teach in this course? And it was part of the, the COIL program. Um, and so I knew that it would be interesting. I knew that it would, um, uh, be challenging and it would be rewarding. And the SUNY Global Commons program last year, I was first selected as a curriculum developer. Um, I proposed a topic uh, about um, SDG 10, which is reduced inequalities. So the curriculum that I developed was international perspectives on reduced inequalities with the lens on law and social justice. And I loved creating the content. And what I didn't know was whether or not I'd be able to teach it. I was subsequently selected to teach it. Um, and that was incredibly rewarding. It was a six week program where the students from across all 64 SUNY campuses, they spent three weeks learning about storytelling through various modes of narrative, video, podcast, gaming. Um, and then they spent time with me and learned about the law and uh, reduced inequalities and how the law can challenge that. And then we finished the semester by partnering with an, an NGO out of South Africa by the name of Inkululeko. And my students used their storytelling skills and their reduced inequality skills to create a story and videos for the NGO. And it was a truly a remarkable experience. So um, I guess the flip side of that is there are certainly challenges and, and issues you need to work through in, in, in developing these kinds of COIL collaborations. Um, tell us a little bit about your experiences with that. Um, there were some challenges and I think that they centered, um, timing was a, a challenge, technology was a challenge and language was a challenge. So for example, I taught at night, my partner Caesar taught during the day. So there was really no opportunity to have a synchronous class. Um, and my experience in speaking with other instructors is that a synchronous class is more meaningful to students. Um, the second uh, issue might have been technology. We had some technology glitches. We used um, a system that they preferred in uh, Mexico by the name of Edmodo. Uh, my partner's students were very familiar with it. My students were not as familiar, so there were some challenges there. And then the last thing, I think there were some language challenges. You know, it was the presumption that English was a spoken language. Um, my, my partner, Caesar told me that his students felt uh, in the beginning, a level of intimidation that they had to speak in English. But when Caesar came to visit my class, my students shared with him how impressed that their students were speaking two languages. And that was very rewarding for Caesar. And he was uh, grateful to bring that message back to his students. So language was a challenge. And, and so I would say with language that if I had to do it again, I would ask my students to try to learn some Spanish uh, as opposed to putting the burden on the students from Mexico to learn English. So, so in that vein, Linda, um, what other advice might you have for faculty who are just starting to plan a COIL course? I think upon reflecting on, on what went really well and some of the challenges were, I would say to other faculty, uh, let the program sort of organically grow within your class and give it the time and attention that you think you can to nurture it. So what I mean by that, I had this other content of law, order, and disobedience that I felt compelled to teach my students. And I wanted to you know, keep COIL in this sort of four-week content. And looking back on it now, if it went five weeks or six weeks, that would have been okay because the learning was so remarkable. And the reflections that the students wrote at the end of the semester, I understood that the COIL experience was more meaningful to them than learning about some Supreme Court cases. So I would I would tell instructors to uh, give it the attention it needs. So. 
and thanks. Walk. Thanks. Thanks. So just to, 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 um, um, sum up here, I mean, how would you describe your coral experience in three words? I, I think the first word I would use is innovative. The whole concept of using online technology to co-teach a same semester class with another country is so innovative and so incredible. And, you know, kudos to John Rubin, who's a, a purchase uh, instructor who, who professor who created this program. So innovative, I think, is the first one. Um, I, I think the second word I would use is collaborative. It was so collaborative with my partner. And we went back and forth and it was a constant dialogue on WhatsApp or telephone calls or Skype. And we were so inclusive of each other's ideas. And then the last word I would say fulfilling. It was really professionally fulfilling for me. And it was personally fulfilling for me. I mean, it's not in all the years I've been teaching, I've not been to other professors' homes. I've not stayed at their house. I've not met their families. I've not had professors to my home. I went to Caesar's home in Mexico. I met his entire family. Caesar came to my home in Westchester County, met my entire family. Um, and so it was both professionally and personally rewarding. Very fulfilling. Well, thanks, Linda. And we, we look forward, obviously, to continue working with you. And, uh, and again, thanks for sharing your perspectives with us today. Thank you for having me here today. I hope everyone uh, considers COIL as an opportunity for their students. Thanks, Linda.